when we're talking about Kant, I, I mean, if you look at the Enlightenment figures, a lot of them are German. Uh, we see things like, you know, higher criticism as well comes out of Germany. And so there are a lot of philosophical shifts that are going on in Germany, which is largely where the Lutheran church is, not obviously not exclusively. Um, so you do see the influence of some of someone like Kant's ideas within some Lutheran interpreters. That's really clear in especially Albert Ritual. Uh, and Ritual is influenced by a particular neo-Kantian, Hermann Lotze. So uh, that influence essentially boils down to, to one key point in terms of, of this particular discussion of, of union with Christ, which this book explains. Um, and that particular point is this, that Ritual believed, along with Kant, that things are to be primarily understood, not what they are in, in themselves, right? That's the inaccessible realm mm -hmm. that's the noumenal realm but they are to be understood in terms of their impact upon us that's really i think where the the key shift is so the way you see this play out in say union with christ uh, and it's a bunch of uh, finnish scholars starting with toma monerma in the 1970s that really start to point this out so i'm drawing a lot on what they've pointed out but i've gone a little bit further in just reading ritual and trying to identify where is this influence coming from and how how deep is it but but ultimately i think their conclusions are are exactly right here so that ritual for example in his he's got a large study of the history of pietism which he's, he's very critical of and pietism is kind of a whole other other topic which is a bit complicated and i've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with pietism perfect um, <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, which pietism is really interesting because it also is one of those movements that is so i think misunderstood yeah. Uh, and I think Ritual's to blame for that as well. And I think it does have its issues, but, yep. you know, maybe that's a se separate topic, but it is related to this topic of union because it does we'll, come We'll, we'll have another just... episode on pietism and invite you yeah. on. To... Yeah, oh, we yes. could do that. That'd a great hot take. Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's controversial enough to speak about a Lutheran scholasticism, but to say anything yeah, positive right. about pietism is, that's, that's yes. maybe even more forbidden. I don't know. But yes. um, so anyway, in that, in that uh, treatment of the history of pietism, ritual deals with this issue of union with Christ because it played such a central role in, in pietist thought in very much in a kind of experiential way for the pietists. Mm -hmm. So what he does then is goes into Luther's writings and says, well, Luther does use this language of union with Christ all the time. The pietists are constantly citing. So ritual's got to deal with it somehow. Uh, and he doesn't just say, well, I disagree with Luther. He wants Luther to kind of affirm what he's saying. So instead of the union be, being anything, you know, metaphysical, ontological, anything like mystical, he says, it's really just a union of wills. So my moral will is now aligned with Jesus's moral will, essentially. Mm. So, and that's because of those underlying philosophical assumptions. We can't talk about participation in any real right. sense. So right. if it's just about his external influence on me, my union with Christ is the influence of his will upon mine. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's pretty much what you're left with. And then after ritual, and, and this is part of the argument that I make, because I, I hear a lot of people that I know are very influenced by modern Luther scholarship. And this is a criticism that I, that I have gotten more than once in my, in my work is, well, if you look at these figures that I'm criticizing, people say, but, but they never cite Kant. They, they don't, they don't seem like they're influenced by this. They, and, and my argument is, it's not that everyone is consciously like reading Kant all the time. I mean, right. who wants to spend that much time reading Kant anyway? Um, <laughs> yeah. But but the point is, this has influenced the scholarship that has influenced the scholarship that has influenced the scholarship. Right. So this is just stuff that's kind of passed down in, and these are assumptions mm -hmm. that now are kind of taken for granted that I think need to be kind of challenged from, from the ground up. 